Hello at boot hackers. So for those of you who don't know, that was my pathetic attempt at doing some Hindi. So hope you guys like that. First of all, this video was inspired by Insider PhD. She made a video how I made over a K in less than a day. So I really liked that video. So thank you for the inspiration there. If you guys want a link to our channel will be in the description below. Um, the first thing that I did to get in uh, the Integrity Top 50 and I made over 4k in total is of course I had to do some hacking, I had to start and to start I didn't start at Integrity, I, in fact I started on HackerOne and Buckroute. I spent quite a lot of time on there, I found quite a lot of informatives, not applicables uh, and rightfully so now that I look back on those bugs. I'm quite ashamed for even reporting them, but we all have to go through that phase. We all have to make those mistakes because mistakes is just another word for experience, of course. Now, then after a while, I finally found something that was actually valid. I found a really good cross-height scripting bug. And the cross-site scripting bug was because when you entered something on the website, a cross-site scripting attack factor, and you open it in your uh, desktop client it would actually pop up the uh, attack so that was really cool I reported it I got super hyped because hunting was all I did back then I spent quite a lot of time hunting of course like at least for five hours a day and when you finally find something that's valid you go oh yeah that's really cool but I should have known and now, I, now that I look back at it it's really obvious that that was going to be a duplicate that was such an obvious cross-site scripting attack. It was a very basic attack factor. It happened on one of the biggest programs on HackerOne and it was like, of course this is going to be a duplicate, you dummy. But of course I lost hope a little bit after that because I was like, oh, am I ever going to find anything even useful? The reason I got into bug bounties in the first place is because somebody gave me the advice because I was very skeptical. I was like, why would I be the one to get into bug bounty hunting? There are so many good bug bounty hunters out there. Why would I be the one to find some actual vulnerabilities? Why would I be the one to get these non-duplicates, the, these things that are really impactful as the first person? And he was like, you know, with the amount of software that gets pushed every single day, with the amount of new targets that enter the market, with the way every single tester is unique and has their own methodology, it's bound to happen that you're going to find your vulnerability, your first real vulnerability, but you're going to have to push through quite a lot. And that's when push came to shove. So I, I was thinking back to his advice and I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to push through this. I think this is still of some of my initiation phase as a rookie bug bounty hunter. And I moved on to Integrity. I heard quite a lot of good things about them and I fell in love with them the moment I found my first bug there. Um, the first thing I did was I went and I tested every single uh, target that I could find for every type of vulnerability that I could think of. I even went as far as to go to um, try and learn new things, try and learn new methodologies on every single target that I found. like. Of course, it was still new for me. I was very much a beginner and I still am in, in quite a lot of ways. Um, but at the moment, I, I, I went really deep into every single type of vulnerability that I could find. And I was like, I'm going to test everything until I find my first valid bug. And if it's actually valid and I'm quite good at it, then I'm going to look into that type of vulnerability some more. So the first vulnerability that I found that was actually valid was a cross-site scripting. Um, I talked about that in a video before this one. I'm going to link it as well. It's going to be in the top here somewhere. So it was a cross-site scripting bug, really cool. Um, and I actually got paid for it quite well as well. And then I actually started testing other applications for other stuff. Um, I was like, maybe cross-site scripting is my thing. So I went really deep into that. I tried to get some really cool cross-site scripting attacks and I actually got a cross-site scripting attack. But the problem was it was a self cross-site scripting. And I didn't even know that at the time, but self cross-site scripting is when you insert a, in, an attack factor into a page that's only visible for you and it pops. So 
nobody else is going to be able to see that page only when they log into your account and that's not going to happen of course. I had that on my hands. I was able to chain it with a CSRF eventually, thanks to the help of the amazing triagers at Integrity. They gave me quite a lot of help and tips, like try doing, try chaining this with a CSRF to see if you can raise the impact, um, because this is not impactful enough. And I started looking, I was able to chain it with a CSRF, but that vulnerability, it took months, months before I got an even a response from the target itself and it, it was quite okay of course because my, my vulnerability still wasn't as impactful. The only thing I managed to do was annoy you with a CSRF attack and that was it. I wasn't able to steal any cookies, I wasn't able to execute any JavaScript functionality. So that was the end of the line for that vulnerability for me. And I lost all of my hope in cross-site scripting at the time. But of course, later on, I picked it back up again, and you guys can see that in my full methodology. But I moved on to some other targets, more business to business type targets. Uh, I'm talking about payroll applications. I'm talking about HR applications. Basically, what's really important for me is that I can create users on different privilege levels, and I have to be able to create them myself or change those privilege levels at the very least. Um, now, a couple of examples are going to be like team leader on integrity. That's an open, uh, an open, um, an open target. So if you guys want to take a look at that, I'll put a link in the description as well. That's a really a target I would recommend if you like targets like me that I'm describing right now. And I started looking for broken access control stuff and IDOR as well was added as well. And I found a couple of dupes again, because basically, same story, I was hunting on a very common functionality, really easy to find. And of course, that was going to be a duplicate. Now, hunting was all I could think about at the time. I was hunting for hours every single day. I was trying everything that I could, trying some recon, doing some Google dorking, doing some simple Google searching even way back URLs getting to know all of these different types of tools that I could use and also attacking the main application. That was also something I was really into heavily. For attacking the main application, I had a basic methodology now and I really wanted to focus on broken access control on IDORs. So that's exactly what I did, of course. And I was thinking, how can I find some vulnerabilities that are not going to be duplicates? And it then it started to dawn on me, I made this click in my head that if I really wanted to find some impactful vulnerabilities that were not duplicate, that I would have to start thinking really outside of the box because I wasn't going to be the first one. I'm not a very competitive guy, so I'm not going to be the first one to a target because I don't like to compare my skills to others in a way that's competitive of nature, you know. I like to improve myself, of course, but I don't like to put my skills up against somebody else's skills. And that's basically what you do if a new target releases and you are one of the first people who gets access to that target. You're trying to match your speed against the speed of all of the other bug bounty hunters. And that's nothing that I want. I don't want to have anything to do with that kind of stuff. I don't like that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to think outside of the box really well. And this is where the different users of the different privilege levels come in for me. I was starting to test those different privilege levels. But what's really important is that I was able to make my own accounts and customize those privilege levels. Because something that I've noticed that quite a lot of hackers do, at least that's what I think they do, because otherwise I'm pretty sure that I would have gotten quite a lot more duplicates. I think quite a lot of testers only create the accounts that are available, like a user and an administrator. But if you can customize the roles, it really pays off to put some more effort into it and actually customize some roles and think how those roles can actually contradict each other and make for situations that are undesirable for your target. I was also starting to think of some more strange flows like uh, exporting of products, importing of products, um, like just disabling super admin accounts, all of that stuff, like um, just trying it in the application, you know, and also testing for hidden parameters, like 
I'm talking about, let's talk about a shoe uh, sales store, for example. Now, if you buy something from a shoe store, you can also return the product. And the return flow, I'm 100% convinced that the return flow is going to be much less tested than the buying flow. Everybody's going to think, oh, okay, I can buy a product that's going to be good. I can leave a review. I can test that. Uh, maybe I have a wallet that I can charge and I can test a little bit with that. But nobody, at least not a lot of hunters, are going to think, oh, I can also return this product as well. Or maybe you can also contact customer support and you can test for blind cross-site scripting there. So there are quite a lot of possibilities that you can test, but you have to think outside of the box. I've given you guys quite a few already, but of course everybody's able to see these. So quite a lot of hackers are going to test for them from now on. That's why I recommend that you guys think a little bit for yourself about what, what type of vulnerabilities you can find that are a little bit off the beaten path. I often say that I walked the road that's least walked and I want you guys to do exactly the same. If you see a crossing, if you're at a crossroad and you don't know which path to take, take the road that is least walked upon. I promise there are going to be the most treasures there because if you follow the perfectly pristine road, of course, all of the treasure are going to be picked clean from that. If you guys are a little bit into gaming and RPGs like I am, you know that you always have to go off the road to find the good treasure. And that's exactly what I want you guys to do as well in bug bounty hunting. So I found quite a lot of vulnerabilities that are actually broken access control and IDORs because I used Authorize. I have a video on that as well. I really like Authorize and it makes it really easy for me because you can semi-automate your IDOR and broken access control testing. And I went through quite a lot of targets, like every target that matched the requirements that I told you guys about where I have different privilege levels. I was going to test that target specifically. And then I was going to test for those flows that I told you guys about and quite a lot came out of that. Like, I mean, really quite a lot because it landed me in the top 30 of integrity and it's amazing that I got that far. Uh, it landed me in the top 30 at one point. Uh, I'm going to lose my spot, of course, because now I don't have as much time to hunt. Many, many of you guys probably know that I have a little baby and quite a lot of time goes to her. She's almost two years old now, so quite a lot of fun. Um, but that's also why, of course, I'm going to lose my spot as high up as it was. Does that mean I'm going to stop hunting? No, of course not, you guys. I recently reported another broken access control that got triaged. So thumbs up, uh, thumbs crossed, fingers crossed. I mean, fingers crossed that it's going to be accepted by the company as well. And I'm, of course, whenever I have time, I'm going to keep on hunting. But you guys know how this pandemic situation is. You're locked at home, but it seems like you have less time than before. It's strange, it's insane for me, but it's also amazing because it allowed me to grow my channel much faster than it would have otherwise. I'm pretty sure of that. And I would like to thank you guys very much for watching this far. This has been how I got my first, how, no, not how I got my first, but how I got in the top 30 of integrity right now i'm at spot 41 as i'm making this video um so that's still not bad of course i'm still doing quite good i have almost 500 points overall so that's not bad at all if you ask me i'm going to put a link to my profile in the description as well if you guys want to see that and i would really recommend that you guys just start hacking now i also have a challenge for you guys you're not getting away unscathed this time. I really want you to, for the next 30 days, just make it 30 days. I really want you to try and spend any amount of time towards reaching your goal. Whether it be 10 seconds, 10 minutes or 10 hours every day. Just make sure that every single day you spend at least a little bit of time towards your goal. And I promise you're going to be amazed by the results that you're going to get out of that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the beautiful Christmas decoration here, I would also appreciate a thumbs up. And thank you very much for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hacker.